Hi everyone, my name is Victor and I am one of the authors of TechNeed. I welcome you to the Ansible Series 2. This is the second series of our Ansible course. I will also drop the link to the first series in the description box below in case you need to refer to some information in that series. More so, if you're going to be writing the RHC certification exam, you can check our website for the exam preparation or practice questions. This would help you in preparation for your exams. So without further ado, let's get started. What is Ansible? Ansible is a software, a very simple and easy to use software that is used to automate and orchestrate IT tasks. A straightforward illustration of this concept is this. Imagine you need to install and configure the Apache web server on 10 different nodes. By the use of Ansible, you can automate this process across all 10 nodes simultaneously, and this eliminates the need to manually install and configure Apache on each node one at a time, streamlining the deployment process and saving considerable time and effort. So let's look at the Ansible concepts, components, and architecture. In this section, we will talk about components such as controller, manage nodes, inventories, plugin, module, playbook, and haddock. The Ansible architecture is similar to a server client-based system. To use Ansible, there must be two types of machines. One machine is the Ansible control node, also known, also known as the controller, while the other machine is the managed node. And of course, there can be more than one managed nodes in the Ansible architecture. The controller is the node the Ansible software will be installed on, while the managed node or nodes are the nodes that will be managed by the controller. The managed nodes needs to be stored in a repository called inventory or Ansible inventories. Also, the controller will communicate with the managed host by a plugin and the default Ansible connection plugin is SSH, which is sufficient for the connection of Linux machines. This makes Ansible simple yet powerful because we don't need an agent for the communication between the controller and the managed nodes. For you to be able to automate or orchestrate your IT task, the module or Ansible module is needed. And Ansible module are small units of Python code. Also, there are hundreds of Ansible modules and the Ansible module can only be executed by a tool or component called Playbook or Hadoop 2 as well, yeah. So Ansible Playbook is the Ansible component that consists of instructions and tags that you want to automate to execute the module. And the Ansible Playbook is written in the YAML format. As we progress in this course, you will gain familiarity with the playbooks and how they can be written. So let's talk about the Ansible installation. The Ansible software can be gotten in three different ways. It can be gotten as one, as part of the package shipped with the Red Hat Enterprise Linux starting from Rel 9 in the upstream repository. It can also be gotten from the upstream community. And thirdly, the Ansible software can be gotten as Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform product. Getting Ansible by this method is recommended for production environments because you will get full support from Red Hat. You will also be able to download Ansible and its important tool from the Red Hat repository directly. Before we install Ansible, let's discuss some other Ansible important tools or packages one of which is the Ansible Content Navigator. The Ansible Content Navigator, 
also known as the Ansible Navigator, is used to develop, test, and run Ansible playbooks. This tool replaces the Ansible Playbook tool and other command line tools such as Ansible Config, Ansible Inventory, and etc. The Ansible Content Navigator also separates the control node on which you run Ansible from the automation execution environment that runs it by running your playbook in a container. So also let us look at what automation execution environment is. So this is the container image encompassing Ansible or Ansible core, Ansible content collections, as well as the necessary Python libraries, executables, and other dependencies essential for playbook execution. So with Ansible Navigator, you have the option to choose a specific automation execution environment for running your playbook. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at a step-by-step -step guide of how to install the Ansible software. So thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like, share, comment, and when you do this, you will encourage us to do more of those videos. Thanks, more, thanks for watching again and bye for now.